talking a bit early. First, let's uh, find our reference image. I guess let's load up our lineup. And let's duplicate it since it's locked. Uh, let's duplicate the one that isn't locked. Then delete the lock layer. Let's rename our original one and let's rename the one uh, art one that we'll, we'll be working on. Uh, let's adjust the canvas. I usually do a four and a after. So I'm going to remove our original one over once I get the canvas resized and then hide it. It's like I switched them around. <laughs> Alright, it looks like since this one isn't fully black and white, I need to adjust it and remove his, uh, the eye color. Looks like I uh, went to replace color. And you kind of need to find the, whatever target color you are and select it and uh, adjust the lightness to turn it to white. So we can color it whatever color we want for lighting. I have no idea what I'm doing here. <laughs> oh, it looks like I'm. Oh, I'm importing the reference image. Yeah, I usually try to find models, but I don't know. Whatever will work. RX78 is pretty popular. What I did was create a mask on our line art. Or no, I created a mask on. The reference image, and what I'm going to do is do a rough cutout. You can be as detailed as you want. I usually don't go too exaggerated, just to kind of help me to find the shape a little bit easier and focus on colors. Yeah, the way masks work, if you don't know, is uh, black removes removes parts of it, and white adds it. So, like, it's non-destructive editing. So it's not like erasing, like if you miss a part you just switch back to white and you can add it back. It just looks like it's gone but it's not actually gone. I usually do a few passes on it whenever I'm doing mask. I usually start with a large brush then keep dropping down the size, do another pass and then smaller etc. Why I'm messing with the layers? Looks like I'm still renaming stuff. Looks like I'm starting to make the color layers. I recommend like starting with like basic colors first and maybe defining it or kind of the most areas like in the RX-78 so I'd say mostly the red the red is pretty common and then maybe the blue Then what I do is I color the whole area on the layer, like yellow. Then I'll create a mask, and what I'll do is I'll just uh, hide all the color with the mask. 
and then what I'll do is I'll sort of paint it back in. Do the same for red. Drop it on, switch the mask, hide it. Blue, do the same thing. Try pick a blue. Drop it. Create a mask. Drop our black to hide it. Gray, same process. Now I'm going to use the magic wand to select areas to fill and then while that area is still selected I'm going to switch back to the paint buck tool and switch the white in the mask and add it back in. It'll be confusing at first. I usually do smaller areas because sometimes the, on some of these line arts the uh, you can't always tell the. I think the selection is called Dancing Ants. The little selection area. Sometimes it's not always apparent if you get everything you want. And I usually use a Control D and deselect it. See what I all I got. Doesn't look too bad. I used to just use the paintbrush and uh, use a multiply layer, so the so all the like shadowing and black would uh, go underneath. But the problem is you go outside the lines and then you got to worry about multiple layers overlapping. So I'd have to go back and trim the edges of the blue, and then I'd have to when I say do the red, I have to go back and trim it again. So I was doing double the work. Now we're switching the yellow. The way the magic wand works is uh, it selects an area of pixels that has to be closed off. So like if there's missing a black block, I'm sure I'll show it eventually. But you might have to add in some pixels to fill it so it closes it. Because whenever you use the magic wand it might bust out of it and fill other areas that you don't want colored. If you see the grid line showing up, that means I'm at the pixel level and I'm starting to get uh, really close down. <laughs> I usually hold the spacebar and pan a lot too. A lot of it for me that was just like looking at my reference art and deciding, you know, what color I want it to be or like what exactly it is. Sometimes depending on what reference image you use, you not always can't tell like where a color goes and stops depending on how good the line art is. Seems like on a lot of the line arcs too they'll do like the joints with the dark gray and some of the hands. I usually leave that in just because it's kind of easier to kind of define it instead of just you know all black and then black or all white and black strokes. Uh, you can go back and do that the way we replace the colors on the eyes though. Yeah, here's an example where I'm trying to get. Uh, I think this is like a scope lens, but there's a missing pixel there. So if I try to select that, it's just going to flow outside of it. I, what did I just use? Oh yeah, I used the pencil tool. Select it and then add a yellow mask back in. But 
but it makes it super easy to change because all I have to do is uh, go to that layer and make sure I'm not on the mask but on like the yellow color to the left of the mask and then I just drop on a new color and it changes every all the like whatever yellow colors I had Trying to look like something now. Yeah, like I said, it, it does take it does take me a while to set on covers. Like if I'm doing a custom paint scheme, like one, I actually had two reference images. I had like one of the regular model, and then I had one I was gonna paint it to look like a uh, just a I can't remember, like a Blood Raven Space Marine from Warhammer 40k. So I was trying to like mix and match colors and like try to figure out where the lines would be. So, it, you know, it was still on a Gundam, but it looked more like a paint mar a Space Marine paint scheme. One thing that's cool is that like if, you know, like let's say you're going to put a decal on that shoulder, you could, you know, make a spot for it and then you could distort it so it looks like it sits on there. And then I usually draw a little note that says this was this is gonna be a decal. Now there again I'm deciding what colors need to go where. That's pretty decent. Do the gun, come on. <laughs> and they said I'll put a link down in the description so where I get a lot of line art if I remember correctly I have to use uh, some sort of translator you'll kind of like that uh, depending on the, what Gundam you pick you'll kind of have to know like what, where they fit in the timeline because they're yeah, I think it's categorized Alright, well, that looks good. Thanks for watching, uh, and I'll see you next time.